the mucociliary apparatus. All the sequences used in this film are presented in real time. They are not speeded up or slowed down. In the background, you can see the mucociliary apparatus at work. It consists of two main components, mucus and cilia. Mucus is a slimy, sticky material which is used by many different animal species. It serves as a lubricant and also provides a protective layer over moist, soft surfaces. Cilia are microscopic, hair-like processes present on the surface of certain cells. The small, single-celled protozoa are using cilia to swim. Cilia are also employed by the gills of fish, oysters, and in this case, young salamanders, to create water currents over the gill surface. This is a piece of salamander gill lying in pond water and viewed through a microscope. See the flow set up in the surrounding water by the ciliated gill surface, even though it has been removed from the salamander. Cilia are also used by your respiratory tract. This is the inner surface of a human bronchus. See the intense ciliary activity. This brings us to the mucociliary apparatus. Humans and animals such as rats have both mucus and cilia in their nose. This is a rat nose open near the midline to show the inner surfaces. Air passing through the nose is represented here in a crude way by the two white lines. The surface lining of the nose warms, humidifies and cleans the inspired air. The surface is increased for this task by the presence of the turbinates. This surface does not look very active. However, let us look at the area in the circle through the microscope. This field of view is approximately half a millimeter across. The shimmering is due to the beating of thousands of cilia. Over the surface you can see clear, slimy mucus flowing relentlessly. Sometimes it is not possible to light up the whole field. However, wherever you can see the surface, you also see mucus, mucus, and more mucus flowing continuously. This mucus flows eventually to the nasopharynx, is swallowed, and ends up in the stomach. Now let us see how this system works. If you cut the nasal epithelium perpendicular to the surface, these are the structures you would see. The airspace is at the top. The blue line, indicated by the arrow, represents the mucus blanket. This blanket of slime is floating on a watery fluid, the periciliary fluid, which bathes the cilia. This fluid is essential for the function of the system, but very little is known about it. Mucus is driven along by the action of these hair-like processes, the cilia, which are extensions of the underlying epithelial cells. The epithelium contains non-ciliated cells, ciliated cells, and the dark structures, the goblet cells, which contribute mucus to the mucus blanket. Mucus is also produced by the underlying glands. Now let us look more closely at the cilia. Here is a scanning electron micrograph of the surface of the rat nasal epithelium to show the cilia, which look like clusters of tentacles. Now we shall see how they work. This animated diagram represents, in a simplified way, the beating of a single cilium. Notice that it is straight on the forward, or effector stroke, and contacts the mucus blanket, and then bends down for the return or recovery stroke. Now let us consider the function of the mucociliary apparatus. If you drop flowers into a stream, they are carried away because they float on the surface. Particles of dust are carried out of your nose in a very similar way. We can demonstrate this similarity by dropping small particles onto a mucociliary apparatus. These are lycopodium spores magnified several hundred times, which we shall now use in place of the flowers. Here are the spores on a mucociliary stream which is slowly carrying them away. These spores indicate the flow rate of the mucus blanket, but they give us no information on what is happening in the underlying periciliary fluid. However, if we watch carefully, there are clues available. This is a rat nasopharynx. 
Watch the dark particle indicated by the arrow. It makes erratic movements, unlike the steady flow of particles in the mucus blanket. We believe that these erratically moving particles lie under the mucus blanket in the periciliary fluid. Tissues from the nasal passages of rats can be studied in culture medium. This is a rat nasal turbinate in culture medium. Notice how the cilia continue to beat and cause the medium to flow in a way which is reminiscent of the flow created in pond water by the salamander gill.